Dahlia Averin was the only daughter of a great duke. Everything was with her, and wealth, and a pretty face, and character, except that even she failed to win the heart of the protagonist. The book Lady Lily of the Valley was a novel that was written only for the sake of one main character. One day, a girl named O'Neill appeared, a word on the breeze, charming many men. Including the protagonist, the guy saw her at a gala and fell in love at first sight. Her silver-colored hair was neatly styled, and her amber eyes shone brighter than any jewel. O'Neill was a girl of extraordinary beauty, but Dahlia's appearance was not ordinary either. She looked like a gray mouse against O'Neill's background. One might wonder what thoughts Dahlia had at that moment when she looked at the protagonist, who couldn't take his eyes off O'Neill. In the original work, there is only one phrase with which O'Neill describes the girl's behavior. Dahlia always watched him from afar. But it was actually Dahlia who met him first. These two upper-class people had a special relationship. They knew each other from an early age and saw each other often as their families socialized. It is not surprising that Dahlia developed feelings for the protagonist as they spent a lot of time together. The firstborn son of the Bowser family was Ludwig Bowser. He was ideal, like all the protagonists of the novels, but next to this man appeared no less ideal protagonist. Soon, having become the most discussed lady in society, O'Neill captivated the heart of Ludwig, which Dahlia could not seize throughout her life. You might think that the girl who lost interest in everything became a villain, which does not give rest to the protagonist, but she did not become an antagonist and did not become the closest friend to the protagonist. Now Dahlia is a supporting character who brings out the protagonist's jealousy. The silver-haired lady claimed that she feels hurt when her boyfriend starts talking about her childhood with Dahlia, but the latter assures that the blonde is just a friend to him. She ends up being reborn as the same simple friend, Dahlia Avrin. The little girl beats her hand on the table and states that she will not forgive. The maid asks if she should pick another dress for her mistress. The protagonist claims that she should not and continues to wonder if she is destined to be an extra errand girl for the sake of the protagonist's love games. And it pisses her off. She can't even confess her feelings to Ludric, and she doesn't know anything about what happened to Dahlia after she was abandoned. All the girl knows is that she entered into a marriage of convenience with some unknown man. There is a possibility that after Dahlia from the original work married according to the decision of her parents, she began to live a quiet life like a mouse. Of course, the protagonist has no such thought. Since she happened to be born with a golden spoon in her mouth, she plans to enter the most luxurious life, to have fun, eat what she wants, lose weight on shopping, and afterwards to have passionate romances with different handsome men from all over the world. She ponders whether a wedding is obligatory and whether it is impossible to just live together. The girl does not care about the personal life of the main characters. She will just leave them alone. The little girl thinks that being friends is also good and decides that she will be a perfect friend in this life. She laughs evilly, and the maid already thinks that there is something wrong with her mistress. But the protagonist doesn't pay attention to it and thinks that she will show everyone what kind of family they will become. Reborn in the novel, the girl grew up unnoticed. She worried about how she should spend the boring period of her childhood, but contrary to her expectations, the life of a child turned out to be quite busy, all because she had to relearn basic human skills, from the ability to control her limbs, which were always moving the wrong way, to how to sit, walk, and talk. Her parents are to be commended for such a carefree childhood. As a child of the upper class, Dahlia was raised by a nanny most of the time, but her parents also tried to spend time with her. Growing up under the care of a quiet and serious but caring handsome father and an elegant and loving beautiful mother was so exciting. Every day became joyful for the little girl as soon as she saw these lovely people. The mother poked her daughter's cheek and claimed that babies often cry, but it was not about their little girl at all. Dahlia was already thinking that this place was going to be boring. The woman, having touched the skin of the protagonist's face, was surprised and said that it was as soft as her husband's ass. The mother asked if she was not right and added that daddy's ass was so elastic. The father was surprised at this 
and tried to stop his wife's stories, and the protagonist thought that this was far from what she wanted to know. The blonde offered the father to take his daughter in his arms. He, with tears in his eyes, already resigned to the shame of his wife's words, agreed. The woman asked if it was time to give the baby a cute nickname. The father said it was a great idea and asked if she had already thought of something. The baby girl sinks into her thoughts. In any case, they really are a beautiful couple. Delia's mother, a former princess of the Union State, and father, who used to be a knight, treated each other with respect, and it's a habit they kept after marriage. Appreciative lovers. Such a description fits them perfectly. When the protagonist looks at them chalking their lips talking to each other involuntarily, the mother interrupts her daughter's musings and states that they will call her darling, and the little girl states that their lips do not come together in a smile. The husband and the girl are shocked at the nickname the woman gave her daughter, and the woman goes on to say that the girl's name is Dahlia, and therefore, darling, is incredibly fitting for her. The name Dahlia is very similar to the English word darling, which means dear. The protagonist doesn't understand how her name became dear. She wonders if anyone is interested in her opinion. The mother suggests that her husband call the baby girl that, but the girl doesn't look happy. The woman claims that her daughter probably likes it too, because as soon as she heard it, she perked up. The father tries to call his daughter by the nickname that her mother gave her, but is cut short at half a word. The protagonist in her thoughts asks the man not to do this, because she is against all these cute nicknames. The father does try to do it again, but again he cuts off at the half-sword and says that he will do it later, because right now he has business to attend to. Afterward, he returns his daughter to the woman's arms, and the woman asks if the little girl thinks her daddy is cute. The protagonist thinks that her mother is the devil, just in angelic form. She wonders if with her weak resistance to demonic forces, she will be able to withstand all this. But despite these experiences, Dahlia has grown up to be an exact copy of her mother. She approaches her father and wants to ask something. The man bends a little to his daughter and wonders if something has happened, and the protagonist, without wasting time, asks where children come from. The father freezes in place, and the mother asks if they should make their daughter a little brother or sister. The father doesn't even know what he should do. Dahlia had high hopes that the tranquility in their close-knit family would last, but the bug was not on her side. Now the little girl is sitting at the table. At the meal, her parents discuss that Charles will soon visit the capital. It is the wife of the Duke of Bowser. The mother asks what happened, since she is going to come only with her son. The protagonist remembers the family of the Dukes of Bowser. It is to this family that the protagonist Ludric Bowser belongs. Mother and son will pay a visit to the capital, which means that she needs to be ready for not the most pleasant first meeting with the protagonist. Usually, male protagonists of novels have an unhappy past behind them, so there is a high probability that they will fall in love with the protagonist at first sight. Yes, and such stories are liked by readers, Ludric Bowser also could not escape this pattern because the first of countless misfortunes prepared for him by fate. Apparently, he and Duke Bowser had a dispute again. Most likely, the episode called The Collapse of the Family is about to begin. Unlike her parents, who married for love, the Bowser family's marriage was a sham. The Duke had a cold-blooded and ruthless character, but at the beginning of their marriage, the two seemed to get along well because the man treated his wife with respect. However, soon Bowser met a woman that could melt his heart. When she became pregnant by him, blinded by love, the man decided to bring his beloved to the residence. Of course, the Duchess's opinion was not taken into account in any way. The protagonist thinks what a pathetic piece of trash he is. Hey, I can see why the Duchess was desperate because the man who had been troubling her heart had suddenly changed. There was a scene like this in the original Lady Lily of the Valley. The protagonist claimed that the mother was always tormented when she looked at him, because at such times she remembered his father and felt a longing for him mixed with hatred and slowly went mad. The blonde recalls that he said he didn't believe in love for that reason, because it brings about the death of a person. 
The guy watched the whole process of his own mother losing her mind from the beginning to the very end, so he probably formed a trauma. However, these are future events. Baby wonders if Mrs. Bowser is still sober, or if she has already heard rumors about the pregnancy of her husband's mistress. Dahlia wonders what state the protagonist is in now. If he grew up watching the picture of his parents' eternal scolding from an early age, it's quite likely that he is the same cold-blooded and rude Duke of Iron and Blood as in the original, and it's better to be ready for anything. After a little while, an invitation from the Duchess Bowser arrived, and the day was surely approaching when the girl would be able to test whether her ideas about the protagonist in his childhood years were correct. The letter was intended for Cleo Avrin, and it said something about an invitation to a tea party. The little girl realized that their legendary first meeting with the protagonist would take place very soon. As she heads in the carriage to the mansion, she realizes that the hour has finally come when she will meet the protagonist with whom Dahlia Avrin from the novel has been unrequitedly in love all her life. The words announce that they have arrived. When the protagonist looks out of the carriage window, a cry of delight comes from her lips, for the atmosphere of this mansion really suits the famous Bowser family. The butler claims that they have been expecting them, and his mistress is now in the greenhouse. The main character sees a woman with blonde hair and thinks it must be Charlena Bowser. Dahlia's mother approaches her friend, asking why she is so thin and if she has something wrong with her. The Duchess replies that she is fine. Ah, uh, the protagonist realizes that the woman cares about her presence because it must be hard to talk about sensitive topics when a child is around. The baby greets Mrs. Bowser and introduces herself. The Duchess says she's heard a lot about her, and it's nice to meet Dahlia, she tells the baby, who is hiding behind her, to say hello too. The main character sees a nice-looking girl and wonders if people with such looks even exist. And if she's really a person, she didn't hurt herself when she fell from the sky. The girl doesn't appear in the novel, so Dahlia deduces that the Bowsers also have a daughter. Her shy face is so adorable that the protagonist thinks how cute she'll be when she smiles. She wonders if she'll get to see the brunette smile if they get a little closer. She wonders how to make it happen and realizes that she needs to say hello first. She greets the girl and calls her Mrs. Bowser. Then there is silence, and a second later the child bursts into tears. The Duchess looks at her child and asks how a boy can cry so bitterly. The protagonist wonders if she heard it and realizes that it is not the daughter of Duchess Bowser, but her son. If so, he is the protagonist. Dahlia opens her mouth wide in surprise because his image is very different from what she had drawn in her head. Of course, as described in the original, the protagonist was also an extraordinary beauty, but the smooth black hair, the indigo-colored eyes, the rise of which makes you covered with ice crust, the muscles that peek through the thin shirt and the way he stood, slightly bowed and holding one hand in his pocket with a languid expression. His image was comparable to a black panther for a girl. Dahlia thinks her ideal type should be tall, trim, hot, and willing to give his life for her. And today she's so excited that she's going to fall in love with the main character she meets, but he's more like a kitten than a panther. The Duchess soothes her son and asks him to stop, and Dahlia thinks the main character isn't even a cat with a difficult temperament, but a kitten that cries as it leans against its mother's shoulder. Dahlia's mom asks if it's really a boy. Charlena says it is. A lot of people mistake him for a girl, but he still can't get used to it. The woman asks what to do. After all, her friend's son is prettier than her daughter, too. The girl is shocked by her mother's words and wonders if she should not be in her mother's eyes the most beautiful in the world, because she is her daughter. The protagonist looks at the boy, but he turns around and clings to his mother after crossing her gaze. The girl thinks, how can you be so charming? She was happy with this life because she was lucky with her appearance, but at some point she turned into a squid in front of the protagonist, and his first impression of her will probably be ugly girl who didn't realize he was a boy. Her mother tells Charles not to worry, for Dahlia is sure to cheer up the Duke. The girl does not understand what her mother wants. Noda only asks what her father told her all the time and quotes her father's words that she should always take responsibility for her actions. 
She then asks who made Duke Bowser cry, and the protagonist replies that it was her. After that, the blonde asks what needs to be done. A moment later, the two women were already wishing the guys a good time. Dahlia waves at them and ponders if this was her mother's plan all along. Resigned to it, she decides to apologize first. She approaches the brunette and says she's sorry she mistook him for a girl. It's just, he's cute. The protagonist says that it's probably unnecessary, but still, the guy is going to be incredibly handsome. She's sure of it. Ludric was silent the whole time, and the girl felt awkward. Then she held out her hand to the boy and asked if he wanted to take a walk together. When the young lady already realizes what she's doing, she thinks she wasn't. Even though this is her second life, making friends is hard enough, and if Ludric ignores her hand, it will be sad. But she is unlikely to be taken by the hand of such a shy child. Contrary to Dahlia's expectations, the boy reaches out his hand in response and places it on top of the protagonist's hand, and she doesn't even know what to do. She almost cries out because the boy is so cute. After an hour, Dahlia is so uncomfortable she wants to run away to wherever the hell she is. Of course, angels are always adorable, but they walk around for an hour, during which he responds with the most one-word answers possible. The protagonist told him that today is a good weather, and he just agreed. After that, she claimed that the gardener is really a master of his craft, but Ludric only claimed that he did not know, because it's been a long time since he came here. The girl looks at the face of her interlocutor and wonders if she was too naive, she thought, and that if she set a topic for conversation, it would start naturally. However, Dahlia didn't know that the main character would be so silent and the conversation wouldn't work out at all, and she couldn't tell about their friendly family to someone who didn't have everything going smoothly at home either. Also, maybe it's just nerves, but her hands sweat terribly. The girl, I already think the main character's impression of her has changed from a strange girl to a strange girl with sweaty hands. She thinks she needs to wipe her hands, but she can't do that and pick up her hands again. She decides she'll make an excuse and quickly lets go of his hand. The protagonist turns to the guy, but sees tears streaming down his face. Dahlia asks if something has happened. She already asks in her mind if her hands were too sweaty and if the guy was disgusted and uncomfortable. But he answers that nothing happened, and he just feels that the young lady is uncomfortable to be with him. The main character wonders how he realized it. She doesn't feel uncomfortable around him. She just didn't know what to do with her hand. Ludric says that he is not too eloquent, because he feels that he is causing difficulties for the guy. Tears flow again, and he apologizes again for the fact that the girl is again facing such a sight. Dahlia offers the young gentleman a look at her hand, when he looks, she asks if he can see that it is sweat. The guy immediately offers her a handkerchief, and the protagonist states that she will be sure to wash it and return it. The protagonist tells her not to worry about it, as he didn't know that was the cause. Dahlia asks if his hands got wet, and states that it must have been unpleasant for him. Ludric swears that he didn't know, and thought the girl was feeling discomfort because of him. And the protagonist says that since it's true, she'll believe him, and he'll tell her his name in return. She says that they can't address each other as Mr. and Mrs. all their lives, and they haven't introduced themselves to each other. But Ludric asks if the girl hates him. The protagonist does not understand why he has such thoughts, as there was no reason for it. Even though they only exchanged a few words when talking, this young protagonist is radically different from the tea image described in the original work. Afraid of what might make the others uncomfortable, he finds himself out of place and gets lost when a bit of banter is made at him. Taking all this into account, we can assume that the young protagonist is an introvert. The girl thinks that he must have been very hesitant to ask the question about whether she hates him. If the protagonist here and now doesn't give him a clear answer, he will continue to make up all sorts of things to himself. She's thinking how hard it is, since the girl said she wants to be friends with him. Dahlia asks why he thinks so. The same one says that the girl saw him crying. The protagonist asks what's wrong with that, and Ludric claims he cried again. The young lady asks if that's all, and hears yes in response. But the young gentleman argues that no one likes to watch a baby cry. It's because it's horrible, loud, disgusting, it's pathetic, Naturally, it's annoying. 
The boy says that's why he had those thoughts. Dahlia thinks that the expression on the boy's face, well, who said such sad words about crying children deserving hatred, remained calm. If he thinks this is normal, then what does he have to listen to day in and day out? The young lady realizes she needs to say something. She claims that she cries a lot too and asks if he has ever laid down on the floor while cranky. The boyfriend claims he hasn't, and the protagonist says she has and asks if he hates her now. Dahlia assures him that if he has trouble answering, she can show him right now. Shotten is quick to say he didn't hate it, and the protagonist claims that she has no hatred or annoyance for the young gentleman either. She introduces herself as Dahlia Avrin and claims that she doesn't tell her name to people she doesn't like. The girl asks what about him. Looking at the boy's face, she secretly thinks that she will probably remember the smile of the main character, or should I say Ludric, for a long time. And naturally, since then, she has grown to care more about the brunette. At first, he was just a friend with whom they had once exchanged a word. But for little Ludric, the protagonist began to feel more pity than she thought. The girl rides in the carriage and thinks that originally it was not part of her plans. Even knowing what is going on in his family, she cannot influence what is happening. When it becomes known that the Duke has been cheating on his wife for several years and finally brings his mistress to the estate, Duchess Bowser goes mad. Little Ludric, who is watching, will have to endure unbearable suffering. The main heroine knows everything, however. She is unable to stop them. Since she will be able to influence the course of events in any case, the girl decides that she will simply ignore what fate will provide the Bowser family. But after looking at the boy for not being able to cry properly, and at his incredible smile in response to her poor consolations, Dahlia realized that she might not be able to push Ludric away anymore. She had noticed a few features in him that day, a scar, neatness, uncommon niceness, and showing great attentiveness to the moods of others. There was also something else. The protagonist asked which brownie he would have with watermelon or strawberry. The boy told Dahlia to choose first. The young lady noticed that he couldn't make a choice. When she asked what was better to play puzzles or Jenga, Ludric replied that they could play whatever Dahlia wanted. When the protagonist asked him where they would go left or right today, the guy claimed that they could go wherever she wanted. The girl thought that he would finish her off so soon, but he's not too cute, of course. The main character doesn't understand what the problem is and thinks that he hasn't formed preferences yet because of his young age. But that's probably not the point, because he must definitely dislike something. In the original, he had clear likes and dislikes, to the point where he would immediately destroy anything he didn't like. Dahlia wondered how a character could change so much. She kept observing what Ludric liked and what was the opposite. As a result, she found out that the guy I like deserts and asked him about it, but he immediately started popping a brownie in his mouth and claiming that he really liked them. The girl realized that he could hide his tastes. But it is possible not to like sweets, but to conceal it is eerily strange. He looks like a man who was taught not to show even such weaknesses. The girl wonders what if it's not the first time. The Bowser family is known for forcing knights to obey themselves unconditionally, and the heir Ludric has met the exact same fate. A child unable to make his own choices, the girl is afraid to even imagine what will be going on in his head when he grows up. With the idea that no one cares about his opinion, he could easily become someone who gives up easily. However, Dahlia will try to explain to Ludric, who has grown up in such an environment all his life, that it's okay to talk about things and what you like or don't like, but old habits are not easily eradicated. The protagonist says she's about to burst and suggests that she doesn't eat any more desserts. All Dahlia can do now is be considerate of the boy without making her behavior too obvious. When they played cards, the girl threw them out of her hands and said she didn't want to play games today where you have to think with your head and asked what about Jenga. When they were eating, she claimed that the cream soup gave the best mushroom soup and asked if Ludric would like to taste it with her. As they were walking, the protagonist claimed that if they went right, they would run into a training ground and asked if he wanted to go left. The protagonist agreed with her with a smile. Maybe it was because of the guy's cuteness or a sense of joy as he slowly began to open up to her. 
But over time, Dahlia began to observe him more and more, and one day, when this genius with his son complained to their estate, the father of the protagonist wanted to compliment about Charlena's daughter, but his wife elbowed him and greeted the young gentleman. Dahlia saw that her dad also mixed up the gender of the protagonist and thinks that now it is clear who she went with. When they all sat down at the table to eat, the girl thinks that something is wrong with this atmosphere. She thought that Ludric would sit next to the Duchess. However, she doesn't understand why he is sitting next to her now. Dahlia doesn't understand what the adults are up to and what those sparkling eyes mean. She decides she needs to change the subject first. The girl asks her mother how she befriended her mistress if they lived in another kingdom. The father tries to change the subject and says what delicious dishes, but the mother stays and says that it's all because daddy asked Charles to build a bridge between them. The protagonist is shocked because it is the father that was known for his decency and solidity. What can you do with the fact that her father is an incorrigible shy who blushes like the last fool and do not find a place from the slightest touch of her mother? The girl asks why he did that and if maybe the mother was so beautiful that he had to hurry. Babe also asks if her father was worried that someone might steal her away. Charlena states that it's true. Cleo came to the Empire for the sake of making a sham marriage to a member of the Imperial family. But the girl's father, who arrived at the Imperial Palace, fell in love with Cleo at first sight. The vice commander, who lacked skills, became her guard and the blonde thought that there are such people too. After that, Adelio almost broke into a lump. A little later, Charlena told the girl's mom the whole truth. She genuinely wanted them to bond. Cleo says that she was good and helped them a lot, although Adelio was worth seeing then. The Duchess says it's for sure. At first, the girl's father didn't notice anything at all. He didn't even know that Cleo had developed an interest in him. The protagonist realizes that they are now discussing a story that only the three of them know. She tries to see how Ludric is doing, but he looks at his plate with a serious look. When the boy puts the beans in his mouth with effort, Dahlia realizes that he doesn't like them. The girl thinks that if you don't like something, you don't have to eat it. Here, no one will judge you for your eating habits. The young lady tells Ludric that he cannot eat if he doesn't like it, it took him by surprise, and he claimed that it's not like that. Then the main character says that the parents are engrossed in a conversation, so no attention is paid to them. The kid says it's not that he doesn't like beans. The girl interrupts him and says that he just didn't like them today, and Ludric says with a smile that it's true, because it's a little hard for him to eat them today. Dahlia thinks what a cutie he is, and says that she is jealous of him because she has an unloved food, the brunette asks if that's true, and the young lady replies that she is, and pepper is her most hated dish in the world. In her mind, she realizes that it's not to that extent, of course. Ludric interrupts her musings and says that he really can't stand beans. The blonde says it's a relief to know that she's not the only one. The boy apologizes for lying, but Dahlia already knew all about it. She tells the boy not to worry and asks him how he feels about the pepper. The young gentleman says positively, then the protagonist leans over to him and offers to swap plates. He looks around in shock at such an offer. Dahlia thinks how cute he is being, thinking he is committing some kind of crime. But a child should know how to do a prank. She decides to take this opportunity to teach the boy how to have fun for real. The girl says he doesn't like beans and she doesn't like peppers, but she wouldn't mind some beans right now. Ludric tries to object, but the young lady offers him a glance at his parents who are engrossed in conversation as if it were their last conversation in life, and they don't even look over here so no one will know they've switched. Shotten asks how on earth anyone could do such a thing. But after the protagonist claims that nothing happened, he smilingly agrees. Until that moment, the girl had no idea that this minor incident would cause the first problem in their relationship. Cleo, looking at her daughter, remembering that she doesn't like beans, she is a little surprised that the girls switched plates. Afterward, Ludric and Dahlia went into the room to put the puzzles together, the Shotten pondering if the young Ally is okay, you. Then she looked so tired. Now she's lying on the couch, the guy can't help but think how beautiful the young lady is. He covers his mouth with his hand when he realizes what he's thinking. He doesn't have the courage to say it when she wakes up anyway. 
Dahlia had always told him how beautiful he was, but the truth was, the girl was much more beautiful than him. That lively aura emanating from her and the energy-filled face. However, due to lack of confidence, the young lord can't tell her this. He is ashamed and embarrassed besides. It might burden Dahlia. He remembers the duke calling him a wretch and thinks he should stop thinking. The guy thinks the blonde might be hungry when she wakes up, so he should get her some snacks at least. That's why he came to the kitchen. Ludric is thinking about what to get. He wants to bring Dahlia something she likes. Shayton already imagines how the girl will thank him. When he sees the happiness on her face, he feels better himself. The maid asks the young gentleman what's wrong, and he replies that he just wanted to get some snacks. The girl says that if he had pulled the rope, they would have come to them and asks what the lad wants. Ludric says he wants something with beans. The woman concludes that the gentleman likes them very much and says that is commendable. Another maid says that their mistress shakes at the sight of them. Dahlia says that they live once, so they should eat only what they like. The maid is surprised that the girl is old enough, but sometimes she acts so childish. Ludric doesn't understand what they are talking about because the young lady said that she likes beans. The boy wonders if her tastes might have changed in the meantime, because seeing how the maids talk about it as if it were a long time ago, now it must have changed. When the puckish man returns from the kitchen, someone asks him where he went. Ludric looks up and sees Cleo. He claims he's bringing her and Dahlia a snack. The protagonist's mom asks if it's a cake, and the guy says it's a specially made sponge cake with black beans. The woman wonders if her daughter's tastes have changed, because the girl used to hate beans. In any case, she is happy that her daughter has become not so picky about food. We wish you a pleasant appetite and a good time to the guys. Ludric recalls how the girl at the table claimed she wouldn't mind the beans and asks in his mind why she lied. The ever bright and sincere Dahlia lied to him the only time he hesitated. He recalls the girl asking him what he would choose. It was difficult for him at first. There were hardly any moments when he chose anything on his own. Because even if he chose what he wanted, he still wouldn't get it. He was like a willless puppet and did what his father wanted him to do. However, Dahlia did not press or rush him. She, on the contrary, chose independently what he could not choose, as if looking into his soul. It seemed like magic to the guy, but now he realizes he was just imagining it. Shotten realizes that must be why he liked spending time with Dahlia. She was totally fitting in with him. But the young gentleman wonders if the protagonist liked being around him. The young lady notices that Ludric has become strange. She can't say in what way, but he has definitely changed. The girl calls the guy a few times and asks him what he's thinking about. Usually when she does that, he gets scared and blushes, and then starts mumbling something under his nose. But now, he says that she has nothing to worry about. The main character is shocked by such words. She can't believe her ears, because their naive kitten couldn't answer like that. Something is wrong here. It feels as if Ludric is hiding something. Dahlia looks at him and thinks, before he didn't hide what was on his soul and didn't know it was all written on his face, the girl assumed it was all because of his age. But when did he have time to grow so much? Lately, the young master has been masterful at hiding his own feelings. That's not all. It also seems as if he's watching her facial expressions and moods. The protagonist does not realize that he is watching her just as she is watching him then. Observation is an attempt to determine the mood or intentions of the interlocutor, but she does not hide anything from Ludric. A little while later, however, she recognizes the reason. The mother asks if Dahlia has grown to love the beans, but her daughter claims it's the same as before. Then the blonde woman asks why her daughter switched plates with Ludric. The protagonist realizes that she saw everything and claims that the situation was like that, and the woman asks why a few days ago the guy carried her a sponge cake with black beans. The girl asks how her mother found out about it. The blonde woman claims that she met him then. It's just that the cake that Ludric was carrying had black beans in it, so she thought that her daughter had finally stopped being picky, but apparently everything is the same as before. Dahlia jumped up from her chair and asked her mom if she really told him about the girl not liking broads. Finding out that she was caught in a lie, the protagonist immediately decided to apologize to the brunette. 
Whatever her intentions, she might have upset him very much, even though she had done it for him. The fact was that she had lied. Apparently, this incident made him doubt that her words were true. That's why he had been watching her so closely, suddenly apologizing for the past few days. But why? As soon as she is about to apologize, she can't even open her mouth. The girl approaches Ludric and tries to tell him something. She didn't understand how to explain herself and tell him that she didn't really like the beans and that she lied to him because she thought it was hard for him to eat them. Dahlia also didn't understand how to tell him that she was being so caring and was afraid he would say that he didn't need it all and was uncomfortable with it. So the main character just said she didn't mean anything. Even though it's her second life, all these subtleties between friends are so complicated. Dahlia's mom and her friend say it's time to go shopping. Ludric has only been to the capital a few times, so he is not familiar with the city. At this time, the protagonist thinks whether it is better to leave everything as it is because he may not like it again, but he can't refuse. But then she thinks that it may be for the best, because in the capital, Ludric will be excited to see different sights. Then there will be a chance to talk, and after a delicious meal, the atmosphere will be much less tense. That's when the girl is going to have a conversation with him. She's already imagining how she's going to say all those words to the guy and explain herself to him. She clenches her fist confidently and thinks that this chance to become even closer to the brunette will put aside all formalities. The main character's mother asks if she and Ludric will sit together, and the girl replies that of course they will. But the guy has other plans. He sits down beside his mother and claims he's going to sit with her. Dahlia Shok looks at the guy and wonders what to do. Apparently she was wrong to think it would be so easy. When they arrive in the bustling town, Cleo asks where they should go and Charlena suggests they go to a restaurant later as they have already had lunch. Also, there is a famous atelier nearby and they can go there. The blonde says she agrees but doesn't know for the kids. The protagonist is in her thoughts, begging them to go out already. She looks at Ludric and wonders what about him. As they walk down the street, the girl thinks that he is surprised that the scenery here is different from the northern part. In that case, she can show him the city, because walking around the capital, they might get an ideologue. The girl realizes that this is her chance and hopes that no more mistakes will be made. She only he says the name of the brunette, as her mother interrupts her and suggests to go to the pastry shop first. When they enter the building and sit down at the table, the protagonist, sitting with a menu in his hands, realizing that Ludric does not like sweets, but he will definitely choose the first thing to catch his eye on the menu and, without showing the slightest displeasure, will empty the saucer against his will. The blonde turns to her mother and says that today she doesn't feel like eating cakes at all, she asks if she can order a regular tea with fruit. Cleo is very surprised because her daughter goes crazy when it comes to sweets and asks what's wrong with Dahlia. Well, yes, just claiming that she recently transferred desserts and doesn't think she can eat even a piece. The woman suggests at least adding milk and honey to the tea, but the protagonist refuses. She turns to Ludric and says that if he's having trouble making a choice, how about ordering the same as her? The guy with a serious expression asks why she's lying. Dahlia looks at him in shock. She has a lot of excuses before coming here. She did eat a lot of desserts. Besides, she certainly doesn't particularly like the bitter taste of black tea, but it's not to say she hates it either. What mattered most to the girl was being able to spend time with Ludric again. She thought she had to make concessions for that, but really she just had to be sincere. The brunette claims that Dahlia always has room for sweets, he asks if she didn't say that there was even a time when she ate cakes all day long. The protagonist does not understand when she said that and claims that she has only tried to eat like that. She is also a human being and sometimes she gets bored. But the protagonist of the novel asks what about the beans and whether saying she liked them was a lie. The girl realizes that she should say that she decided to help, thinking that he does not like them, but decides to say it later because it is worth apologizing first. The guy claims that the fact that the girl did it for him is so pressurizing, and just the thought of what Dahlia had to endure for him torments his soul. Ludric claims that he is incomplete, that he lacks something, and that this is the reason why he causes difficulties to the girl. That is why he hates himself so much. 
The brunette says he wants to ask one more question, asking if the young lady really had fun spending time with him. The protagonist was naturally amused, but she doesn't know if he will believe her. The young gentleman's gaze, filled to the brim with lost trust, she can't even look him in the eye properly. The girl thinks that even if Ludric doesn't believe her, she is obliged to say that I really was happy with him, and she enjoyed every minute of it. She remembers how the guy smiled warmly at her and realizes that she has to say what's on her mind. But the brunette rises from his chair and apologizes for his ugly appearance. He says he'll be gone for a while. Dahlia asks him to stop and states that they need to talk, as he hasn't heard her answer yet. Ludric states that he is having a hard time talking right now. The protagonist reaches out to him and assures him that she has never once been with him while he was with her. But Ludric pushes her away, and a waiter comes up behind her with a tray with two mugs of tea on it. The girl realizes that this is definitely going to be hot, because one of the mugs is already flying right at her. Ludric looks at her, then cries out her name. The girl still remembers the look in the protagonist's eyes after he yanked her hand away. His eyes were wide open with fright, and for a moment the despair reflected in them. A young lady sits on the floor, doused with a hot drink. Cleo almost faints at the sight of this, and Ludric's mother orders to call the guards. The protagonist wonders if everything will be all right, because it was the height of their discussion. Dahlia turns back to the guy and asks in her mind that if their gazes meet, that he not be bothered and smile. Now the protagonist is lying in her bed, she is pondering what kind of drama is unfolding, when the verbal altercation with Ludric reached a climax, hot tea spilled on her hand. If anyone saw this, they would think she was the heroine of a tragic love story. The doctor says that fortunately there will be no scars and the girl is in very good health, and the temperature of the tea was not that high, so it's not serious. The doctor adds that it's impossible to predict when and what the consequences will be could also go infected, so it's best to be extra careful during the week. Her parents are horrified at what they have heard and tell Dahlia that she is grounded for a week. The girl claims it is just a wound on her arm. But her parents warn the one that if she tries to escape, they will extend her punishment for a whole month. The girl agrees and wonders why Ludric had that look on his face. She wonders if he was scared so much. It's more than just shock. It's as if he turned white with horror. The protagonist realizes that there is no point in speculating, and it is better to ask the guy when they meet. Sitting on the bed, she realizes that even though they were in an awkward situation, having recently had a fight, it was still working out pretty well. She ponders if the guy will even visit her once. A week later, Dahlia is arguing loudly and asks why Ludric is coming to see her. She thinks that he might be sick or still angry, or that he might be embarrassed about their recent quarrel. She tried to ask Charlena about it, but just couldn't find out more as she apologized with that guilty smile, but the brunette hadn't shown up once in a week. The protagonist decides she doesn't care about the arrest and she just has to see him today. As the girl heads down the stairs, she hears voices coming from the living room. One of them asks Ludric if he will go to see Dahlia today, but he says no. Dahlia realizes that the boy is not visiting her on purpose. She is incredibly upset and thinks that he is not an angel at all. But the guy says with a serious look on his face that he has no right to see the young lady. The protagonist recalls the look in the young gentleman's eyes that day and realizes that he felt remorse. Then he definitely thinks that what happened was his fault and that the girl suffered because of him. The young lady suggests that he may be afraid, and he fears that she will become contemptuous of him. The blonde stands at the door and realizes that when her house arrest is over, Ludric probably won't even come close to her house, so as not to cross paths with her. But she can't just leave it like that. It doesn't matter to the girl what's going on with the original, the main thing is to make it work somehow. Whether they remain friends or enemies is not important. But first, Dahlia wants to resolve the misunderstanding that has arisen between them. She just wants to look him in the eye and tell him that what happened was not his fault. And then find out what's in the guy's heart. The young lady, I realize, has to face him any way she can tonight. But if she rashly bursts into the living room, it'll be the same as last time. So she decides to pretend to be sick, the girl goes back to her room and cries loudly. 
She vaguely remembers the moment when the burn had caused her to run a high fever and she had been unconscious all day. Dahlia also vaguely remembers the commotion around her, accompanied by the occasional pain in her arm, feeling the cold towel on her forehead and the cloth being used to wipe away the sweat from her body. And the last warm touch on her arm, it was unequivocally Ludric. The girl keeps screaming, but the brunette keeps not coming. No matter what happens, he doesn't come. The main character sitting in the living room clenching her fists, while Dahlia wonders if she should do something about it. The doctor claims he couldn't establish the exact symptoms, so he slightly strengthened the medicine the girl had taken earlier. Since the effect will be stronger, she should sleep well tonight and take a painkiller with sleeping pills. Dahlia decides to pretend to eat the pill and quietly throw it away herself. She even faked being sick to give Ludric a chance to come into her room and can't give up so easily. The girl lies on the bed and thinks that the young gentleman will not come, but after a minute, she hears the sound of cautious footsteps and realizes that it is a brunette. When the guy walks over to her bed, she thinks that's great. He's sneaking into her room, so if she immediately gets up, even though it's embarrassing, he can't hit her. The protagonist only asks why the girl threw away the medicine. Dahlia realizes that the guy caught her pretending and ponders whether the parents and the Duchess pretended not to know about it. The girl opens her eyes, and Ludric looks at her worriedly. The young mistress decides to act brazenly. She claims that she was really pretending. For a start, the girl wants to apologize. However, she wanted to meet him by all means. If she did not do such a thing, the guy was and did not come at all. Dahlia asks the brunette if he knows why she wanted to talk to him. The guy claims he knows, but wouldn't it be better if she didn't see him? The girl hearing this doesn't understand who would be better off. She asks if he's joking and if it's because of her wound, because if so, it's just an accident and it's not Ludric's fault. But the brunette says that he kept thinking why such things happen all the time and why the girl should hurt herself. Ludric says that it's all because of him, because of him she used to eat the food she didn't like, because of him she got burned and her life was much calmer before she met the guy. The guy claims that he's the one who ruined that piece, so they'd better not see each other anymore. Dahlia rises from the bed and asks with a serious tone if he is afraid. She wonders if he is acting this way because he is scared and afraid that the girl hates him and is disappointed. The young gentleman tries to say that this is not the case, but the protagonist asks if he is afraid that one day she will distance herself from him. Ludric is clearly afraid that Dahlia will change. It's not that she will reproach him, he's worried that the girl will become disillusioned with him and distant. Moments later, he claims he's right because he's a bad person. The guy claims that he can't take care of himself, let alone Dahlia. He has a lot of faults and fears. His eyes fill with tears, Ludric claiming that if they continue to spend time, he will probably bore the young lady. The protagonist realizes that there is a simple way to overcome this situation, to calm an anxious Ludric. She ponders why he is bothered by something that hasn't even happened yet and how many more times she needs to tell him that she won't leave him. However, the situation will happen again and again. Even if the brunette confides in her, his worries still won't go anywhere. Ludric says that the girl must be in pain because of the burn. He claims that today is the last time she sees him, so she won't have to suffer anymore. But Dahlia asks who said today was their last meeting. The girl is an adult who can easily persuade little children like him. The babe says that of course she guessed, but the brown guy really doesn't know anything about her at all. The young lady claims she didn't get what she wanted and asks if the guy thinks he can get off that easy. Ludric asks if the girl wanted something and stating that if it's within his power, he's willing to do anything. He says with tears in his eyes that if he can, he will do anything for Dahlia. Yes, even if it is beyond his power, he will do his best. The main character thinks for a moment and says there is something. The boy states that if she tells him, he'll lay it on the line. Dahlia asks if he's really willing to do anything. The main character, with a serious expression on his face, claims that they are. Of course, the girl thought they were friends. It's not like they need to question the topic. If they play together, they naturally become friends. However, in the case of Ludric, things may be quite different. 
For generations, the Dukes of Bowser had raised most of their heirs like the rulers of the Northern Lands. It is said that they were not allowed to communicate freely with the same status. The current Duke Bowser, part-time Ludric's father, is a horrible person who deserves to be called trash, so the protagonist must have grown up isolated in his mansion. What is normal for Dahlia is hardly normal for Ludric, so she decides to give a name to this ambiguous relationship. The girl extends her hand to her interlocutor and proposes to become friends. That's not what Ludric expected to hear. The protagonist claims that until that day she had no friends of her own age. That's why she was so happy when she met him. Besides, the guy was very handsome, sweet, obligatory. So at first sight fell right into her soul. From the day of their first meeting, the girl decided that she would definitely make Ludric her friend, so she specifically wanted to show her best side in order to get closer to him. The young lady asks if he can fulfill her selfish request or if it is too much. The brunette tearfully says that it's not hard at all and there's really nothing wrong with it. The blonde hugs him and says, what can you do if that's all she wants? That day, she and Ludric talked about many things, the situation that happened to them last week, the burn event, the verbal altercation at the candy store, and even the feelings caused by the lie. After discussing all of these things, they realized that things like that didn't matter. Cleo comes to your daughter's room and says she's been wondering where the boy went, and here he is. Dahlia and Ludric fell asleep on the bed. The main character's mom wished the babies sweet dreams. When it's time to say goodbye, the young lady asks the guy if he'll come again. Ludric says with a smile on his face that of course he will come, and the protagonist and realizes that she has a lot to do in the meantime. In the library, the girl found a stack of books. The girl drags them to the desk. She reflects on the fact that she and Ludric decided to sort out his problems together and find out what he likes and what he doesn't like, but he still considers Dahlia's emotions paramount, as if his opinion means nothing at all. If this continues, the situation that happened last time can happen again at any time, so the young lady first of all needs to explain herself to him. Dahlia needs to be told that he can share his thoughts any time and their emotions are equal. She also wants to convince him that the guy is much more precious than he thinks he is. The young lady opens the book and decides to call it a project to improve the main character's self-esteem, but the girl doesn't understand how to make it happen. One of the maids asks what her mistress is talking about, and the protagonist asks how to improve her self-esteem. The girl says that in the case of self-esteem, she usually follows a plan. The maid claims that she has gotten into the habit of writing out things to do every morning, and when she does them, she becomes proud of herself. Along with this, her self-esteem rises. The blonde jumps up from her chair and thanks the woman. She thinks it's great, because if you collect the opinions of others like this, you'll find something useful. When the protagonist asked her mother about it, she said that she keeps a diary. She doesn't do it with any particular purpose, but writing down her thoughts or what happened on a certain day, she is comforted by the words, good job, remembering something good. Cleo is even more looking forward to tomorrow. His father says that self-esteem is the key to self-confidence, and he asks if he should say that fencing has helped him, but Cleo says that he is a complete dummy about it. Adelio says that in any case, to increase self-confidence, you should do what you love to do, because it will also help you achieve your goals. When Dahlia asks the butler about ways to improve his self-esteem, he says that he looks in the mirror every morning. Before he starts doing tasks, he repeats, looking in the mirror, that he will succeed and something like that. The girl asks if it works. The man replies that it works like a Swiss watch. He has been doing it since he was young, because his self-esteem was very low when he first started working. At first, it was difficult for him. He simply could not look at his reflection, but over time, he got used to it, feeling how the repetition of these words changes something in him. Butler wanted to stop doing it, but it is quite difficult to eradicate the habit. After Dahlia thanks the man, she heads over to the maids, but one of the girls says they don't know much about it. The other maid says that she has something she does every morning, after all, and it's cross-stitching. The woman asks if it helps. Then many servants came to their mistress. They all offered their advice. The protagonist asked why there were so many of them. 
She had heard that the court servants of the Averin family were known for their kindness, but she didn't think they were that kind. One of the maids asks her mistress about the rumors that her self-esteem has plummeted, causing her to fall into depression. Dahlia is shocked by such words. One of the servants tells her mistress that self-confidence is related to muscles, and another servant assures her that self-esteem is formed at an early age. The protagonist thinks that she should put it all in order. After the girl comes to her room, she makes a sample checklist to improve her self-esteem. The first on this list is to do something you love. The second is to find a favorite activity. The third is to avoid those who undermine self-esteem. The fourth is to socialize with those who see its merits. The fifth is to look in the mirror and praise yourself. The sixth is to develop the habit of accepting compliments. The seventh is to write down your preferences. The eighth is to write down what good things happened during the day. The protagonist looks in the mirror and thinks it would be nice to keep a diary, if she offers such a thing. Yes, they can share with each other joyful events still need to not forget about daily praise. The girl realizes that if she starts by saying that the guy is handsome, he will get embarrassed. She wonders what if she calls him cute right after that. Dahlia can only wait. She wants to see Ludric as soon as possible. After three days of anxious waiting, the brunette has finally arrived and the protagonist runs to meet him. Ludric is also rowing about the meeting, his mother claiming that the boy has already buzzed her ears with words about how he wants to go to them as soon as possible. The protagonist is all red and asks his mother to stop, but Dahlia's mother claims that they are just a couple made in heaven because her daughter also went around singing how she is waiting to meet him. When they cross their gazes, they smile sincerely at each other. Afterwards, the boys go to the garden. The young lady asks what Ludric likes to do, but he replies that he has no particular thing to do. Then the young lady asks him which activity he likes the most out of the ones he has already tried. It could be an activity that would bring him joy, such as fencing, but the brunette says he doesn't like it very much. He does say that, after all, something has occurred to him. The boy is a little embarrassed to say it, but he likes it when his mom brushes his hair, even though she stopped doing it since the boy got a little older. The main character now understands why he grew such long hair, because his mother liked to brush it, and he liked it when she did it. Although it didn't last long, but he really appreciates the time he spent with his mom. A young lady claims that her dream today is to become a hairdresser. She asks her boyfriend not to worry because she will do all kinds of hairstyles on his hair and comb it until he grows up. Dahlia asks if there's anything else the guy likes, since there are so many different things to do in the world. Ludric, with a slight blush on his face, claims that he enjoys seeing her, and the protagonist claims that it's not an activity after all. Then the guy says that he enjoys spending time with her. Dahlia leans into him and tells him that she likes spending time with him too. Afterward, the boys head to the house. The young lady asks if Ludric remembers their agreement to respect each other's opinions and that they need to find something they both love. She claims that she thought about it and came to the conclusion that just finding out what they would like is not enough. The guy can talk about what he likes without taking her interests into account. The protagonist asks that when their tastes diverge and the guy doesn't like something at all, can he tell her about it? Ludric is silent, and the girl continues and says that it will not be easy if he does not change his character. The guy agrees, and the young lady asks what if she suddenly says that there is a way to change him, and whether in that case the young gentleman is ready to study with her. Maybe she's prying and shouldn't have gotten involved at all, but she still wishes the brunette could make decisions without looking at other people. Dahlia claims that she might be able to help him be a positive influence, so... Ludric doesn't let her finish and states that they will, he thanks his friend. The protagonist realizes that he unconditionally believes all her words, and the guy at the time asks what he should do. The blonde asks if he wants to keep a diary with her, but he has no idea what that is. Dahlia wonders if he's never done it before. The protagonist says he doesn't know if he can call it a diary, but he wrote his daily routine and turned it into his father, because if he didn't, he would be scolded. The young lady wonders if this poor child even knows that good things exist. Dahlia says that she and he will keep a real diary. She takes out two notebooks from the dresser, 
She claims that she didn't know what color the guy would like, so she prepared several. The girl asks what color he likes best, red or blue. Ludric chooses red. When the protagonist asks if he likes the color red, that son replies with slight embarrassment that he does. The young lady argues that in any case they should write down everything, what they liked about today and what gave them pleasure, why he was genuinely glad or happy. The protagonist suggests that he should describe as much as his heart desires, whether it's one line or a whole sheet, and then once a week, they will swap diaries and show what they've written to each other. Ludric says it's a bit difficult, but Dahlia says she's trying it for the first time too. In fact, she's a bit lazy about writing things down, but she has to decide to do it. So she asks to understand and forgive if the guy sees only one line in her diary. The main character cannot hold back a chuckle, and the girl tells him not to laugh because she is serious. Besides the diary, there is something else equally important. The second task they have to do is called self-esteem boosting method number five. Look in the mirror and praise yourself. The blonde says she will start first. The girl cries out that she is charming, beautiful, and attractive. She then suggests with a smile on her face that Ludric repeat this five times every day, but he shrieks with horror on his face that he can't. The protagonist assures him that he should just compliment himself in front of the mirror and even a little praise will do. The young gentleman says nothing comes to his mind. Then the young lady offers him the phrase that he is charming and asks him to repeat after her. The guy struggles to say the two words, but the protagonist says he has to repeat it four more times. On the last time, he manages to say it completely without stuttering. Then the blonde hugs him from behind and tells him that everything is right and her friend is charming. Ludric is embarrassed by this and says that he cannot throw such words around so easily. From then on, they started practicing the methods the girl told them about. They wrote down the things to be done on a given day. And as my father said, they did what they liked. And after all the fun, he and Ludric would exchange their diaries. Except that this time, the boy asked if Dahlia had written anything this time too. But the girl handed him the diary and said that of course she had written when the protagonist took the diary and started reading. He reads the first line that Ludric came today and it was a lot of fun. Dahlia asks if he wrote anything and when she took his diary, she saw that there is a whole dissertation in there. The protagonist claims that everything is fine and his girlfriend must have been very busy. Still, there are days when the young lady writes a lot in her diary. He thinks it's the most important thing. He read aloud a few more lines about how the girl had found a bakery where the food was very good and it smelled nice with butter. She and Ludric had been at odds for a while. It had only been about six months since they had first met and he was already a childhood friend to her. Perhaps if she had a younger brother or sister, she would feel the same way. The girl realizes that she's made it and it's like their family now, but she has this sickening feeling, treading the garden path wondering if she's missed something. One day the kids were playing Jenga. When the main character's mother walked into the room and called out to him Lud, the Tower of Sticks sprinkled. Charlena asked if she had interrupted her son's concentration and apologized for it. The woman said she could bring snacks if they were hungry. The protagonist replied that she was only in favor, and when the Duchess left asked Ludric if he had a nickname why he did not tell her about it, the couple claims that he is a little shy and his mother does not always call him that. It just happens that she calls him by the diminutive form of his name. He does not remember it. The girl asks if she can call him that as well and at the end of the sequel adds his nickname. The guy says she just did and she already did. Dahlia says she did it that way because she knew he would definitely say yes. Ludric blushes a little and asks if the young lady has an affectionate nickname too because he wants to call her that too but the protagonist claims that she doesn't have an affectionate nickname at all and it is missing. The girl has already completely forgotten about it and decides to take her nickname to the grave with her. The young lady's mom peeks out from around the corner and asks why her daughter is lying and maybe she doesn't like her. But then nothing can be done. Cleo asks Ludric to understand and he asks Dahlia why she lied because she could have told him right away. The young lady realizes that he will definitely sulk and apologizes. She claims that she didn't mean to lie, she just thought it would be awkward for them if he called her by that nickname. But the brunette says he wants to know by all means. 
The young lady recalls that when they first met, the guy was someone who couldn't express his thoughts properly. The main character utters the word darling, and Ludric is shocked not to realize what it is. Dahlia, with an innocent smile on her face, says that her nickname is Honey and asks how he is. She thought that when someone called her that obscene nickname, she would die of shame on the same spot. But looking at the guy, she realizes that it would be a lot more fun than she imagined. Dahlia urged the brunette to rather call her that, but he remained silent. The young lady asks if he won't call her that and claims she was right. It was better for Ludric not to know her nickname, but he insisted anyway. The young gentleman says it's not what she thought. He's all red and has a hard time saying the nickname. And the main character thinks he's so cute. She had no thoughts of revealing her nasty desires to the guy, but they ran to be honest with each other. The feeling of awkwardness was not only caused by her nickname, she told Ludric to show only his real self, while she herself hid her true self. The girl decides that from this day forward, she too will be honest. The next day, she asks the protagonist if he can't still say that today, she claims that her nickname is very strange. Ludric says that it really isn't and apologizes. He states that he will do something else instead, anything but call the girl by her nickname. The young lady realizes what an opportunity she has. She just wanted to tease her brother a little, and in her thoughts asks if he knows what she is going to do and who he is so naive. The girl says he didn't have to go that far and she is touched. She asks if he will keep his promise and he claims he will definitely do it. The next day, Ludric is reading a book, but he is distracted by a loud sound. It turns out to be his girlfriend who came with a box. The girl says that she has made a wish, and after the young gentleman asks her what it is, she suggests that he play family. The brunette says it's kind of age inappropriate. Dahlia knows, of course, and the guy's eyes ask if she knows how old they are to be playing such games. But they'll be playing newlyweds, she's sure of it. The main character admits that, to be honest, she didn't have anyone to play this with because she didn't have any friends before Ludric, so she constantly had to entertain herself by herself. So the first thing she wanted to do by having a friend show up was to play this game. The brunette doesn't know what to say to that, but when Dahlia asks if it would be difficult for him to do so, he can't stand it and agrees. The young lady states that Ludric is going to be a mom. The guy obviously did not expect such a thing, and the protagonist continues her story and states that if the brunette is going to be the mom, she will naturally be the dad. She asks how to play the situation better and suggests the scenario that first she finishes with work and comes home. Ludric asks why he has to be a mom, since he is a boy, so he should be a dad. A young lady asks, what is this prejudice, and what if there are two girls or two boys in a marriage? She asks her friend to think which of his parents is prettier mom or dad. He immediately answers mom. Then the girl asks the same thing only about her parents, and Ludric answers duchess. Then the blonde girl states that means mom is always prettier than her husband. She asks the guy who is more beautiful, her or him, after he is silent and doesn't know what to answer. Dahlia seizes the moment and with a genuine smile on her face suggests that the guy put on a dress and go out. Ludric is shocked to hear such words. He asks if his girlfriend wants him to wear it and the protagonist states that she does. The brunette is not happy about it and says what would happen if he dressed up and met someone like that. He means that his mother would be extremely surprised if she saw him. Blondie, I realize he's learned to defend his point of view. And the boy goes on and asks if she knows how embarrassed he'll be. The young lady interrupts him and asks if she should also become more like a man. Before the protagonist has time to realize anything, he is already being dragged away by two maids, and he yells back that he didn't mean it. After her transformation, Dahlia looks in the mirror and the maids compliment her on her appearance. The young lady wonders why she looks so much like her father, but suddenly she hears exclamations of admiration. When the girl turns around, she sees her friend dressed in a dress. Now she realizes how that very famous expression, heart frozen, feels. The brunette asks if Dahlia is okay, but the one only asks with a smile until when is he going to be so charming? The main character is hurt by such words. He takes off his hat and throws it on the floor, and the young lady tries to calm him down and says that it's all a joke. He hasn't fulfilled her wish yet. 
Ludric asks what he should do then. Dahlia claims that his role is eerily simple. The girl proposes a plot in which she will be a minister that works in the Imperial Palace, and Ludric's wife. The important point is that they have a marriage for love. And the brunette claims that usually such marriages are created by calculation, but the protagonist says that they married for love. The young lady claims that they met at a festival in honor of the founding of the state and fell in love at first sight. However, Ludric was actually the fiancé of Dahlia's older brother, but he's a jerk who changes girls like a glove. However, in the end, they got married after overcoming many difficulties, and, in a word, they are newlyweds who love each other. The guy listens attentively to his girlfriend, and the latter says that they should play as if they can't live without each other. The brunette claims that he doesn't seem to be able to do it, but the protagonist assures that it's okay and he just has to do, the girl says, and at the end, they will definitely have that scene. Then they start the scene, Dahlia enters the room and is greeted by Ludric, who has trouble pronouncing the word darling. Blondie claims he rather wanted to get back to his beloved, so he asked me to send him home early, but I only bogged him down with more work. Dahlia claims that his wife has become even more beautiful in a quarter of a day and says that they haven't kissed in a long time, after which he offers to kiss her once, but Ludric interrupts him half-heartedly and asks if her husband has eaten. After he answers yes, then the brunette tries to change the subject and with a slight blush asks what about the bath, and the blonde just asks if they will take her in together. Ludric is already so embarrassed and doesn't know what to answer, so he runs away in tears and leaves the protagonist alone. The girl in male form realizes that she has once again been the cause of his tears. Meanwhile, the brunette is sitting in the garden thinking that this is too much. His girlfriend was originally like this. Surely in life, she is mischievous. Also, according to Mrs. Averin, she's a very naughty girl. She can't argue with the fact that she's mischievous, but there are times when she's sensitive and behaves like an adult. When they reconciled after that fight, she was the first to offer to be friends. Also, Dahlia always supports him in hard times and always says, each other for the sake of each other. But in fact, she adjusts to the situation for his sake, and the guy understands it. Doing that for others is definitely not an easy thing to do, so no matter how mischievous she is, Ludric is glad he got to see her true self. However, he had said from the beginning that he couldn't, and he should have said no. When the girl asked him who was cuter, he really wanted to say that Dahlia was more charming, but he couldn't. He wants to tell her that later, when he's a little more mature than he is now, when he's much taller than her and looks statuesque in the girl's eyes. The guy wonders if he will be able to open up to her then. He looks up at the sky and realizes that quite a lot of time has passed. The boy rises from his seat, and wondering if Dahlia is worried, he decides that he should go back to the game. But suddenly, he hears some rustling behind him. When Ludric turns around, he sees a guy with green hair who freezes in place and asks if he's met a fairy. This is Jero and Hayward, the youngest son of the famous Earl Hayward family, but he's more like a punching bag for his family members. Looking at him, an immature boy unlike his two older brothers, the Hayward couple clucked their tongues, and his handsome older brothers seemed to live to torment the youngest. He's nothing but a sandbag to his family, and today, he found himself in danger when he realized he couldn't contradict the parents who literally had his life in their hands. At the meal, when they tell him that Jaron will go with them to Duke Averin's, he even drops his fork. The boy asks why him, since there are brothers. But the father says he heard that the Duke's daughter is his age, his mother, and adds that Duchess Bowser will also be there. The man says that's good to hear. He would tell me that she often socializes with other aristocrats, but it certainly won't do them any harm to make contact with her, and they also heard that she arrived with her son. The boy really doesn't want to go, all because of those Bowsers, because if only Mrs. Averin were there, he wouldn't hate the trip so much. There are good rumors about the daughter of the Averin family. She is said to be sensitive, distinguished, and elegant. Of course, this may be just a made-up image, but good traits are always good. However, the Bowser family is quite different. They do not know what pity is. There are rumors that their house is much worse than a monster's lair. Ah, cold-blooded Duke is the most ruthless in the history of the family. 